Is that her soccer costume? So in sports, we call them jerseys, or in the British world, kits. Sun hats on the field were also something that was very common. I don't see you scoring that World Cup equalizer back in 2011 with a hat on. Crossing. Mr. Woods, would have ruined your hair. I would have ruined my hair. <laughs> yeah. They were getting a lot of horrible things written about them in the newspapers. And despite Honeyball taking the club on tour, wow. even playing at the famed St. James Park in Newcastle, no. the crowds dwindled. So the first attempt to popularize women's football came to an end. Does anybody know what the FA stands for? I do not. <laughs> The Football Association. Yes. Of course. All right. So, <laughs> FA didn't like what they considered to be women getting involved in national politics. So this sparked a propaganda campaign against women's football. So a doctor even published this statement to try and discourage women from playing. It is much more harmful to women than men. They may receive injuries from which they may never recover. Oh, wow. <laughs> I consider it most unsuitable <laughs> game, too much for a women's physical frame. I, it's just <laughs> oozing with scientific facts. I yeah. mean, yes. from, it's just so There's overpowered. So many facts in yes. there. Yes, so factual. It's apparently mind blowing. It's still being said. And what do you think happened in 1921? They women weren't soccer. allowed to play. The FA banned women's football. FA? More like FU. That's right. <laughs> Gonna give you extra credit for that. <laughs> Attention! <laughs> and basically what this ban did was it didn't allow women to play at any of their stadiums outlawing the game in England. It came up with this statement. The game of football is quite unsuitable for females and ought not to be encouraged. So like any outlaws would, the Dick Kerr ladies went on the run. So, Miss Wambach, uh -huh. is it because the men were nervous that the women were getting so much attention at these games? Yes. That's why they started this entire smear campaign. Yes. Against women. Yes. To shut it down so that they could continue getting the audiences. That's right. And it lasted this way for 50 years. It was another 20 years after that before the women had a World Cup. Wow. And the rest is history. Once perceived as outlaws, today, women not only own their own teams, but the top women players have competed in their own World Cup since 1991, when the U.S. beat 11 other countries to win it. 32 countries will compete in the ninth Women's World Cup in 2023. All right, class, let's circle up, talk about what we've learned. Anything interesting? happened in the history of soccer, from outlaws to owners. All of us here are actual owners of Angel City FC. What does it mean to you? I mean, I didn't even know there was a national team until my senior year of high school. I just played because my older brother played. And now as a boy mom, it's important for me to teach him that he should want to be around strong, confident women and not be intimidated by it, but to celebrate it because as many strides forward, there's always those strides backwards. And so it's something that I take pride in bringing him here as an owner now. Remember at the poem opener, we were out on the field with all of those women owners. And when we walked off, there was this father with a little four-year-old girl. And the dad looked at you and said, this is the only world my daughter will ever know. And pointed at the stands. And anybody who was here for that home opener. Felt it. You yeah. could feel it in the stadium that I think yeah. what Angel City captured was what we've been wanting for so long is a place for everybody, regardless of gender, sexuality, race, to feel like they're in a safe place to just be themselves. Glennon Doyle, how did you find yourself as an owner of Angel City? That is an excellent City question. FC team? You retired. You were trying to figure out what you're gonna do next. You wrote a speech about the state of soccer and the inequities between the men and the women's game. Several years later, Natalie Portman called our house 
and told you that she was going to start a soccer team. Wow. Hollywood is joining sports, yeah, so I think that bridge is a huge yeah. change. I don't know where I'm going to hide here. You're, yeah, what yeah, are you what, wearing? What's going on? What are you wearing? Well, I was told I could pick my own <laughs> soccer costume. Are you prisoner on the run? I'm not. I'm a, a Dick Kerr lady. <laughs> it's going to be Glennon and I versus you three. <laughs> That's a, get her! Women's soccer has come a long way, from empty stadiums to World Cups, from the Dick Kerr ladies to Angel City FC, from outlaws to owners. And I, for one, am glad to be a part of it. Yeah!